Hi everyone! In this video, I will share with you five tips on how you can pay off your student loan as soon as possible. Even if you don't have a high paying salary job after graduation or are still unsure of your job prospect, you can still be debt free sooner rather than later. That's what I did by paying off $29,000 $523 in just one year with only 40k salary at age 22 after university. So for those of you who still have a student loan, there is light at the end of the tunnel. So watch until the end. Hi, I'm Amy. If you're new here, welcome to my channel where the goal is to help you reach your financial success. I will share information on how you can earn more, save more, build wealth, and live your best life with gratitude. Please subscribe if you want to be financially blossoming. So tip number one, saving money while you're still in school. If you don't have any income, try making some extra money on the side with a part-time job or an online gig or tutoring, whatever it may be, so that you have some extra money at the end of the day to save up. So during university, I had two part-time jobs where one I was an office assistant and the other one I was tutoring. Basically, I worked 20 to 25 hours a week and I made around two to three hundred dollars a month. It's not much, but every little bits do add up. Then I opened a high interest savings account, which I remember it was about three to four percent back then, which I don't think you can get that anywhere you may. You just have to look around. And I put that aside and I wouldn't touch that because I knew that was the money I need when I graduate so that I could pay off my student loan. You may think that $200 or $300 a month isn't much, but if you think about it over the three to four years of university, I basically ended up saving around $8,000 at the end of my fourth year in university. Mind you, I did have a full-time job during the summer because I wasn't taking any summer courses. So then I was able to save up for more and save up more. So if you have spare time, especially during the summer, try to get a full-time job, earn as much as you can, and then try to balance by saving half of it or more and then spending the rest on say traveling or something that you really want to do because you only live once. Always remember your savings goal so you're not just blowing your money away. So when I graduated, I had $8,000 saved up from all these years of working. And basically that brought my student loan from $29,000 down to $21,000, which is a huge bonus for me. Having a savings mindset and a savings goal is very important. Keep that in mind. For me, I wanted to save as much as I can because I actually got anxious thinking about my student loan when I was still in school because I wasn't sure what job prospect I would have after graduation given that I majored in psychology. I got a Bachelor of Arts in psychology. So with that, you don't really get far. So I thought, okay, I better start now just in case. I also have to thank my parents because being Chinese, they just kept telling me to save, save, save. So I had that mentality growing up that I just need to save for a rainy day. And that's exactly what I did. Comment below if you have Chinese parents who keep telling you to save. And you should really thank them because it's a great habit to have. And if you don't have the savings mindset right now, it's okay. You can start developing one now by understanding why you want to save, how much you want to save, come up with a plan and stick to it. Tip number two, living frugally. This applies both while you're still in university and after graduation. As a poor student, I didn't have much money, so I basically was living quite frugally, always watching where my money is going. So I started the habit of tracking my expenses. Being the nerdy me, I created an Excel spreadsheet where I tracked all my expenses and I even had different categories I would put them into. So they all tally up at the end of the month. So I, I would know exactly how much I spent in different categories. I actually had fun doing that because I felt like I was in control of my own finances. Comment below if you're like me, you have an Excel tracker to track all your expenses. 
Then after graduation, I continued to live quite frugally as well. But now I am making forty thousand dollars a year. I can actually spend a bit more to enjoy life. With forty thousand dollars in salary, and after deduction, it's about thirty-two thousand dollars. So I would have about twenty-six hundred dollars a month to spend. And I would put fifteen hundred towards my student loan repayments. I was able to do it by keeping my expenses really low. For housing, I moved out and I had roommates. So basically, I was paying about six hundred dollars sharing a room with others, and basically, it included all the utilities and wireless internet as well. I mean, it was pretty cheap. I was able to find that rate because it was an older house, so I was good with it. As for food, I cooked most of the time at home, or I would do meal prepping, where I would cook batch of food on Sunday so that I would have food for the rest of the work week, and I wouldn't end up going out to buy food because there's nothing to eat at home. A savings advantage for me is that I don't eat much meat, so my grocery bills are actually quite cheap on a monthly basis. About a hundred dollars or so, or two hundred max, and then plus eating out. I try to minimize my eating out. Usually, I would tell my friends, or we would go find cheap deals to eat. Entertainment expenses vary from month to month, depending on what activities and where I'm hanging out with my friends. I do want to enjoy life more now that I graduated, so that I was spending a bit more. I mean, girls gotta have fun, right? Speaking of going out, another savings advantage for me is that I don't pay for alcohol because I'm actually allergic to alcohol. So I don't buy any alcohol, which is a huge savings. I don't know if it's lucky or not, but I've got the Asian genes where I get all red and then I just don't feel well when I drink. So I basically don't drink, and if I do drink, it'll be like a sip and then I'm done. Comment below if you're like me. You've got the Asian genes and can't drink because we're kind of cheap dates. So I kept living quite frugally and still have fun from time to time. You don't want to be fall into what's called an inflated lifestyle where you spend more money when you earn more money. I mean, I understand you want to reward yourself because you work so hard to get that promotion or whatever you're making extra money now. You want to spend it to reward yourself. So you should always have a plan in place so you don't go over your spending and keep your savings goal in mind. If you stick with living frugally for a bit longer, you'll be debt free sooner rather than later. Remember, living frugally is temporary. Once you pay off your student loan, you can be debt free and you can spend more and enjoy life more. Tip number three: increasing your monthly payments. See if you can make additional income, say starting a side gig or part-time job, freelancing, or starting a YouTube channel. Whatever it may be, make some extra income so then you can put that income towards making additional payments on your loan. So for me, I got a part-time local office job working about ten hours a week, making about two hundred dollars a month, and basically. I use that money. I made additional payments every month or whenever I can towards my loan. With the extra money you make on the side, understand all your income and expenses, and figure out realistically how much additional payments you can make on your loan. Making additional payments is one of the easiest ways to reduce your debt as soon as possible because any amount that you pay over and above your payment. All goes towards the principal of the loan, so it decreases the total interest charged over the years. Tip number four: refinancing your loan. If you borrowed loan from multiple sources, figure out where they're from and how much the principal loan is and what the interest rate is. List everything out. Are they government loans, student lines of credits, credit card loans, or private lenders? Look at how much interest is charging from each one, how much the principal loan is, and how long the repayment period is. Basically, have every details ready so you can have everything at a glance. 
then look into refinancing loan if it's possible, which just means that you are consolidating multiple loans into a single private lender. Ideally, you want to lower interest rate or shorten the repayment period so that it's to your advantage, so you're saving on the interest. To qualify, you usually need a good credit rating and a steady income. Once eligible, compare the lender's rates and the repayment terms and all the details so you can make an informed decision. So how refinancing works is that once you've refinanced all your multiple loans with a single private lender, that lender then pays off your loan for you and then it replaces with a new one that you have with that single vendor now. So you have to be obligated to pay based on the new terms and conditions of that loan payment. Refinancing can be a good option if you're able to lower your interest rate or have a shorter repayment period, which means that you'll save quite a bit on the interest charged over the years. For me, both of my loans were government loans, so there was no refinancing option available. If you want to refinance but aren't able to do so, then that brings me to tip number five, which is to prioritize paying down your high interest loans first. Tackle the high interest ones first. Now that you have a list of all your loans and all the details, like the principal amount, the interest rate, the repayment terms, look at the high interest rate ones and see if you can tackle them as soon as possible. This way, you will minimize the interest you have to pay over the years. And always make sure to pay your payments on time so you don't affect your credit ratings. So there you have it, the five tips. Saving money while in school. Keep living like a student by living frugally. For now, not always. Make additional payments. Refinance your debt if possible to a lower interest rate tackle the high interest loans first. So I was super happy and grateful when I finally paid off my student loan in one year. It's actually 13 months to be exactly. I didn't have a high paying job and I was still able to do it. So I'm sharing this because if I can do it, you can do it too. Paying off student loan may feel slow and daunting, but you have to face it and tackle it. Yes, it's a real burden and can be stressful at times, especially when you don't have money and you have bills just piling up. But, you know, the student loan is not going to go away. It's going to be there. So have a plan and just go tackle it. So I hope you can use the tips I shared in this video to help you pay down your student loan sooner so you can enjoy your life and live comfortably. If you find this video helpful, I really appreciate if you can share, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It means a lot to me. What other tips do you have for paying down your student loan sooner? Please share in the comments below so that others can see it as well. And now check out this video on how you can save money fast and how I was able to use these tips and save 65% of my income. As always, Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great day and a financially blossoming life. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.